Okay, quick video on how to get retro games running on an Amazon Fire tablet. This is the new edition that came out September 2015. It's the base model, so it costs £50 or $50 or about 60 euros. So it's 7 inch and uh, the specs are reasonably good, especially for that sort of price. Uh, it can do quite a lot of standard tablet functionality, but what this video is about is getting the retro games working on it. So fundamentally, although it's Fire OS running on this, it's Android in the background, so Android apps pretty much work fine on it. Um, the default ones you've got um, shown on the screen here. And to do this, to get the retro games running, you obviously need an emulator. And the one I'm going to show in this example is this one here, Snares 9X. Uh, yeah, 9X uh, X Plus. I think this one's by Robert Brolia. Um, there's various ones about, but that's the one that I'm going to show here. So first thing to do is if you go on the App Store, you can download this app called ES File Manager, I think it is. So if I go in App Store, I should be able to see where I got that one from. Um, if I search for ES File Explorer, and there it is, you, it's easy enough to download. Um, I can open it obviously because I've already downloaded it, but just download that one. Then you've got that there. Then put the USB micro USB into the side and into your computer and it'll open up in Explorer, on Windows anyway, um, the root directory. And in the root directory, you just want to create a folder so you can put um, a file in a moment to install. And you can see where it is using the ES File Explorer now. Or you could do it in this interface actually to create it. If you press uh, over here, you've got device and then um, you're looking for SD card. The SD card there refers to the inbuilt memory or storage rather than an external SD card. So hit SD card and these are the default folders and just create a new one. I've called it side loaded apps, but you can call it whatever you want. Then when you've got your side loaded app, that's where you're going to put a file in a moment. Now, because this is Fire OS, it's Amazon's version. In their app store, they've got um, obviously a selection of apps, but they haven't got everything the Google Play Store has. So there are some missing, and I couldn't find this, this um, Snares emulator in their app store. So I had to get it off my other Android device, as the, the install file is an APK file. So if you've got your APK file, you can just copy it across to a folder on your Fire, and you can install it from there. Or alternatively, you can, if you've got a web page where you can download the APK of that um, app from, you can just download it and then copy it across to the file. So when you've got your micro USB connected to the PC, just drag the APK file of the program you want to install into it. So we go, if we go back in here, uh, go in this folder that I created, and there's the APK for it. So once it's there, you can use this ES File Explorer to run it. If I click it or tap it, I get the option to install. Now I've already installed this, but that's how you can go about um, getting it onto your Fire if it's not in the store. So you basically get the APK, whether it's from your existing Android device or if it's um, downloaded from a website, you're at the APK you're after, just put it onto the, the tablet, create a folder in that directory, and then you can install it. Once it's installed, I don't think you need it anymore, and you can probably get rid of it. Um, so I've installed it, and you can see it, um, obviously it's put the icon here, but also I think if I tap games, it put the icon there. And separately, if I go to settings, you can see if I go to apps and games and manage all applications and go to, this is just chosen the downloaded app section rather than I could say what's on my SD card, what's running and all of them. But if I just go to uh, downloaded, if I choose that application that I've then installed, I can move it to, I mean, initially it installs it to the tablet, but now I could move it back to the tablet because I have moved it to the SD card, so you can quite happily move these across. They don't take up much room. It's, what, 8 meg, which is nothing really. So you could install this on the main storage. You don't have to use the SD card element for it. But what I have done on the SD card that I've put in, so I've put a separate 64 gig card in, is the ROMs. So we can check that. Um, again, you can do this with um, Explorer in Windows. Um, if we use ES File Explorer, you can see if I go to the device again, and then I go to the mount, um, the mount folder in there, MNT, and in here you've got SD card two. 
and that refers to the external card that you put in, the micro SD card. And here I've created the Android folder is a system folder that is created there, um, including the apps that I've installed there. So I'll leave that alone. But I've created a ROMs folder where I've put my SNES ROMs and there's four of them there. So they're ready for that emulator. But before we use the emulator, I'm going to um, set up a controller. Now, these emulators do support touchscreen. It does work with the touchscreen and it's got an overlay on there. So you can just use this um, touchscreen to configure it and control everything. That does work, but it really feels weird trying to play retro games on a touchscreen type interface. So what we'll do is check out how it can integrate with a um, Bluetooth controller. And it does it really easily. And if you've got a Bluetooth controller, I'd recommend giving it a go. These ones that I've used are from a company called 8BitDo. I'll put a link in the description, but um, I imagine most will work. And to hook these up, you just go to settings and go into wireless. Bluetooth turned off, so I'll turn Bluetooth on. Okay, so Bluetooth, your fire is now discoverable, and I want to pair with a Bluetooth device. So that's searching for it. It's found my TV for some reason. Now I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to turn it on in joypad mode, which is just to hold this um, on its own without any other buttons. So this button here, I'm just going to hold for, uh, well, it's three seconds. There we go. So it's turned on. And it's gone in joypad mode because it's just flashing a pattern of one rather than twice or three times. And it's that's discoverable now. So we should see it on the screen. It should uh, say that it can find an extra device now. You can also connect with this emulator or this um, Bluetooth method using the keyboard mode or the iCade mode. So there's other options that it can connect in with, with this type of controller. But... Um, I'm just going to do it with this mode. Now, I think I, I might have just missed um, missed it scanning. It's probably stopped scanning. So I'll just hit scan again. Okay, and see if it sees the controller. There we go. So it's come up there. You've got a picture of the controller. It says 8BitD, FC30 Pro, which is that model. I'll pair that. And it'll pair when that blue light goes solid. So it says pairing. And there we go. It's solid. So that's now paired and it's ready to, um, well, it's, it's connected. As it says on the screen, that controller is now connected. And that's all you have to do. Now, I could use this already to, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let me get that on the screen. If I press B, is that the best view? There we go. There, it's taking that screen back. Let me try and... There we go. So you can see that is already controlling the fire. And if I use, I've got up, down, left, right. The analog's working as well. There we go, the analog's working as well. So I can run that emulator now. A to select. It's gone in there. Now, to start with, it wouldn't, um, conf it wouldn't recognize all of these buttons straight away. So if you go scroll down here and choose key gamepad input setup and you can see down here individual device settings there's my at the bottom there there's my controller select A in there and you can say in set game gamepad keys it's already said up right down left so those ones work already but I did find um, down here that select and start A, B, X and Y weren't selected so to choose those you just go into A you press A and it says, what do you want to set A to? So I'll press A there, and then it's got A quite happily there. So it's easy to set, but just run down there and choose those. Then that's it. If I go back um, with B, and at the top, choose load game. I'll choose um, Super Mario Kart, press A. And I had a save before. Oh, I've got an error with a right access loading a file there, but I'll sort that out later. Uh, continue. And there we go, it's fired up. So that's just me using the wireless controller, which is a lot easier way to play this than trying to use the um, on-screen display. And I've also used the menu, which is up in the top corner here. And I, within the options, I've turned off the on-screen overlay for the controller because it just gets in the way, really. So um, just go back to the game with the B button. Okay.
It responds really well. The refresh rate here is, is great. There's no lag. It doesn't feel sluggish. Um, obviously, I'm right up next to the screen for trying to capture the video, but it's got great range on the controller, so you know you can put this away. And it's a portable seven-inch screen that works very well. And I've tried a few different games; it's, it works absolutely fine. And I'll try to get more emulators on here, so you can try other systems besides just the SNES. But uh, yeah, it works fine. The, the top buttons are detected as well, so the left and right. And it's also mapped the, this button here to be, I don't know if that's coming out well, but if I press that, you get the menu screen up and you can choose to save your state. So save that game there and change the slot, the save slots that you're putting in and all the other options. And one under the options there, you can see that. If I go in there and choose video, you can see you've got image effect options, oh no, uh, overlay effect options, so you can have scan lines. So if I go scan line and 33% scan line, um, go back into the game, you see a slight uh, scan line effect going on. So it's a little bit that you can tweak it, you know, until you get the right sort of view, but that's just an emulator feature. Really, I just wanted to show how easy it is on, on a um, £49, $50 tablet to get retro games playing with a Bluetooth controller, which is really a portable solution. And if you didn't want to use a controller, it's quite happy with the touch screen as well. If you've got any questions about how to set this up, please um, ask in the comments and hopefully it was helpful. Thanks very much.